and gentlemen, it's now time for World Championship Boxing. Would you please welcome, making his way to the arena, the challenger from Puerto Escondido, Colombia, Walter Estrada. Well, nine days ago, the phone rang in a little fishing village on the north coast of Colombia, and the man answering that phone got a real shock. Instead of fighting in a small show upstate, would he care to fly to Scotland instead and fight for the World Featherweight Championship? Well, the man answering that phone is the man you're looking at, Walter Estrada. Never fought in world class, only once ever been outside Colombia before, but needed here because Scott Harrison's original opponent, the world class William Abelian, had to pull out with injury. And what does his record say? That he's a puncher at the level he's been fighting at. Yeah, well, Ian, there are dreams and there are ambitions, but I would reckon fighting for a world title was only a dream for this guy a week ago. But full credit to him, he's taken the chance. He was already training for a fight, so he should be in the best of shape. The fact that he's made the way without a problem, it proves that as well. But uh, he's really up against it tonight, so it's all down to how he copes with the big occasion. It might be a shoot or bust situation for him, nothing to lose, give it all I've got, or will he crumble with nerves? Time will tell, we'll find out quite soon. 26 wins, two defeats for Estrada so far, and here comes the grimly determined Scott Harrison, about to make the first defence of his second reign as WBO featherweight champion. And now making his way to the arena, the proud champion from Canvas Lang in Scotland, Scott, the real McCoy, Harrison. Well, he's become a Scottish hero, Scott Harrison. And after nine weeks training in freezing conditions near the slopes of Ben Nevis, He's ready for action. Unfazed, it would seem, by the late change of opponent. Behind him, his father, Peter, and Billy Nelson, his faithful assistant, and Frank Maloney, who believes he has a real talent here in Harrison, who's certainly seen now, never mind governing bodies and sanctioning bodies, among the top five in the world and among the featherweight elite yet. Yeah, but I think that is fair comment. You want to prove that tonight. And as far as the change of opponent goes, I mean, Scott has never been accused of being overly sensitive. I don't think I'll make a blind bit of difference. The fact that Estrada is also a southpaw, if he'd been orthodox, then maybe even Scott Harris may have been a little bit perturbed. But the fact that he still faces a southpaw, then all the plans have worked out in the gym. He'll just carry them on tonight. Nothing has changed as far as he's concerned, apart from the name on his record. Taylor the tape. For the fight tonight. The big difference between these two is the level at which they've been fighting. Estrada, in fact, is a year older. At 27, he's taller and will have a slight reach advantage as well. Both of them making the classic nine stone featherweight limit at the weigh in yesterday at a Glasgow hotel. Scott Harrison's now in a pro for eight years, although Estrada's had more fights. This is the fifth. World Championship fight tonight for Scott Harrison, who mixed at a pretty good level, really, from pretty early on in his career. Estrada, as you can see, 69% success rate with the knockouts, which suggests that Scott Harrison might have to be a little wary about what power he may have. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening once more, and welcome to the Brayhead Arena here in the city of Glasgow, Scotland. Tonight, Frank Warren's Sports Network, www.frankwarren.tv, Braveheart Security and Verve proudly present 12 three-minute rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Welcome to viewers watching this broadcast live and exclusively on Sky Sports. The officials have been appointed by the World Boxing Organization and the British Boxing Board of Control. Supervisor for the WBO is Isvan Koko Kovacs from Budapest in Hungary. Timekeeper at the bell from the British Boxing Board of Control, Ricky Gilmore from Glasgow. 
The three scoring judges at ringside this evening are Andre van Grutenbroel from Belgium, Michael Panic from the USA, and Mickey Van from England. Finally, when the action commences, the referee in charge of the action, taking part tonight in his 61st World Championship, Gino Rodriguez from Chicago, Illinois, in the USA. And so, people of Glasgow, Scotland, live from the Brayhead Arena, this is World Championship Boxing! Introducing to you firstly, fighting out of the red corner wearing the red color shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled eight stones, 13 and a quarter pounds. He has an excellent record, 28 contests, 26 wins. 18 of those wins coming by way of knockout with only two defeats. Tonight, he is the proud challenger from Puerto Escondido, Colombia, Walter Estrada. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing his familiar black colored shorts trimmed with gold. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled eight stones, 13 and a half pounds. He also has an outstanding record, 23 contests, 20 wins. 10 of those wins coming by way of knockout, only two defeats and one draw. Coming to the ring as the former undefeated champion of Great Britain and the Commonwealth tonight, making the first defense of his championship, presenting from Canvas Lang in Scotland, the two-time WBO featherweight champion of the world, Scott, the real McCoy. Mr. Rodriguez will now get his final instructions. Tremendous rounds. reception for Harrison. Gentlemen. As warm as I've ever heard. Okay, gentlemen, him. you guys your instructions. I want you to obey my commands at all times. And I want you to protect yourself at all times. Now, good luck. Walter, te di las instrucciones. Quiero que obedezca mis instrucciones todo el tiempo y te proteja todo el tiempo. Suelte, shake them up. The impressive linguistic talents of referee Gino Rodriguez. Estrada who comes from a little fishing village, population no more than three or four thousand, Puerto Escondido on the north coast of Colombia. But they've got a big gym there with 40 pros based there, including sometimes Irene Pacheco, one of the top flyweights in the world. Estrada can be a bit left arm happy. He's pretty rangy, almost lanky, you'd say. Harrison will have to get inside. Harrison says he's going to jump on him. But there might be dangers in that, Jim. Yeah, he'll have to just maybe sample the power on his arms and gloves before he takes any silly chances. Though, having said that, Harrison doesn't do anything silly. He's very controlled, good pressure fighter. You can see it already. He's just boxing his way in. He, he, he hasn't jumped on this guy the way he jumped on Medina. I think he was in a bad mood that night with something to prove. So at least he's paying him full respect here. Body shot getting in from Estrada. The right to the body as well. Awkward style to work out by the look of it. Harrison's only seen bits and pieces of him on video, and of course he only knew about this opponent nine days ago. And remember Estrada, even if he hasn't mixed in world class, does have 15 wins inside three rounds. Worth thinking about. Whether he can cope when the water's this deep, we'll see. I know I'm saying that uh, Estrada is still a southpaw, so the same problems, but all southpaws are different, all have their own problems, and this fella throws punches from all over. So Scott will just have to keep tight as he's doing now. It's a confident start, this, from Estrada. He looks to have quite a fast left hand. That's the hand that's done most of the damage for him in the wins he's chalked up so far. He's got a couple of defeats on his record that don't read so well, though. One against a journeyman, Jose Portillo, another against a novice pro, Andres Ledesma. That was about two or three fights ago. That isn't such smart form. Scott finding it a little bit awkward to find the range, and that's normal against a southpaw. He just can't get himself into punching range. He's been caught with a couple of shots too. Nothing too dangerous or powerful, but good body shot. Trying to work out the style a bit, Scott Harrison, and while he's doing that, 
Estrada is going for him with that left hand. It's an uncomfortable opening first round there. Harrison quite easy to hit, being caught to head and body. That was a solid shot, the left hand. Harrison does have a good chin, but doesn't want to take too many of these. One or two alarming signs here for Harrison in this opening session. If they thought Estrada was going to be some kind of dummy coming in at late notice, maybe they're going to have to think again. He's got something, I think. Scott is pawing a little bit with the jab. He's going to have to snap in. This guy can throw the uppercut, which is probably the biggest danger to Scott Harrison because his chin's so low. Estrada in the first round here, far better than maybe we expected. Yeah. Can he sustain this? And I think he won the first round, the Colombian too. Thieves. Most of them are opportunists. They're not fussy. They just see a chance and take it. In and out, no time to think. This woman's been caught out. She left her car unlocked. Oh, lucky I was around, eh? Whenever you leave your car, lock your car. Don't give them an easy ride. Vivo! And all around this arena, people are looking at themselves and nudging each other and pulling faces as if to say, hang on, what have we got here with this Colombian? Well, look at the left hand, straight through oh, Scott's gap. All through Scott's career, he has been a little bit easy to hit at times. That was one of the things we complained about, but normally he's throwing so many punches, you don't tend to notice it. But we certainly noticed it in the first round there. Estrada in the red trunks, the late substitute opponent, who for some reason has had world rankings as high as three with the WBA at super bantamweight, the weight below this, although his camp insists he's always been a featherweight, so you can work that one out for yourself. Well, Harrison is trying to circle to his own left to get outside the jab, but the problem for Scott is that most of the problems he faced came from the left hand, but having said that, he's doing the right thing, moving away from that, trying to nullify the jab. Flower of Scotland rings around this Brayhead arena as if to try to lift Scott Harrison. He needs to get closer. I would have think the body attacks might be the answer for him, but at the moment he's getting picked off from long range by these siding shots from Estrada, who's really going for it with the left hand. Promotes him a bit disconcerted himself, free with the head on the inside. Yep, a little Estrada. Bit. I was going to say careless, but I think that was a little bit more cynical than that, to Estrada with the head. So Finding the range now. Best punch yet from Harrison, that left hand. And this is a very gritty, hard man, Scott Harrison. Just uh, looking at the face of Estrada, I just wonder whether there's some damage. It's on the blind side from us at the moment. Yeah, there is a cut. Yeah, just a little neck, doesn't look much, but... Uh... I mean, Estrada can't complain too much. He was the one who was a little bit fancy with the forehead a second ago. Body shot from Harrison is starting to get in close. Estrada, by the way, was due to have fought tonight in Colombia, so he was fit and ready to go into action. I think Harris is beginning to catch that left hand to the body a bit better now. I think his defences have tightened up slightly. I think he was surprised, probably shocked in the first round. Some of these punches straying a little bit low from Estrada as well. This is a bit better from Harrison, just beginning to get to grips with the problems being solved by the Colombian who gets it with a left hand and that rocked Harrison back momentarily. He looks very thoughtful after that. That's a couple of times Scott has been shaken, visibly shaken. And Estrada still looking perfectly at home, not really too much troubled at all. Well, it's a massive opportunity which has come out of nowhere for Estrada. So you can imagine his mentality going into this, he's right up for it. See, Estrada is doing an unusual thing for a southpaw, he's countering Scott's jab with his own left hand and Scott does not have the defence to cope with it. Most southpaws want to pull your jab and counter with their own jab. This fellow's countering with the left hand and it's giving Harrison all sorts of problems. It's not an easy style to cope with. He's quick as well, Estrada. 
The Premiership's greatest. The very finest moments from the most exciting league in the world. What an emotion. Perfect what English football's all about. This week, Clash of the Century. The greatest matches in the history of the Premiership. Collymore hits the ball. And in slow motion you go. No. The players, the fans, the beautiful game. All new The Premiership's Greatest. Tomorrow at 10, Sky One. Very cool and calm. Peter Harrison in the corner. This man knows what it's like to lose this title. He had a virus going in that night against Manuel Medina. Lost the title, regained it from him, knocking Medina down four times and stopping him in 11 rounds in a great display. But this is another matter again. Of course, we've seen a Colombian late substitute come in before for this title years ago, Ruben Palacio. Remember him? He had 11 defeats on his record, dethroned Colin McMillan. See, I think one of the problems too for Harrison, his work is not flowing against this awkward South. I'm calling him awkward, and that's probably, I should be more complimentary. He knows exactly what he's doing, but Harrison's having to force the work. And that's going to take more steam out of him. He's really having to force himself to try and get some results here. He's going to have to be clever, I think, Scott Harrison. He's only fought three southpaws, as far as we can tell, looking through his record, and none at this level. Patrick Mullins has won. Smith Adoom, who had Harrison on the floor, and John Matthews. Strada with a little nick by the left eye, it's nothing much. He still has that confident look about his work. The face, deadpan, nothing that Scott has done so far has troubled him in the slightest. That left hand up the middle is still dangerous. And he has that scything left hand. You can see how he's finished off opponents at lower level, can't you? And the big problem is still for Harris, he cannot get himself into range without taking shots. Eventually he's just going to have to declare war on this fellow, but the fellow's got the power to trouble him, he's shaking him a couple of times. This is turning into, at this moment, a little bit of a disaster for Scott Harrison. He can't solve this fellow out. And what punches is he going to have to take on the way in if he does try to go to war with him? Yeah, and as I say, he's been shaken a couple of times already. He cannot solve out the southpaw jab. And the thing is, it's not the jab that's giving him most of the problems. It's the countering left hand right up through the middle. There was a low one there from Harrison. Keep them up, says the Chicago referee, Estrada. He's discomfited. I think Harrison will try anything he can to just dent this ring of confidence that Estrada carries with him at the moment. See, again, as I've said before, Scott is not the most difficult guy in the game to, to, to hit with punches. His head is always that little bit stationary. He's an aggressive type fighter, so if his attacks are not working, it doesn't have really a plan B. That's a bit better from Harrison as he gets in closer. I and think it's too late in the round, Ian. Just for the first time, Estrada looked a bit disorganised. Some blood is smeared onto the forehead of Scott Harrison. I think Estrada's work in the first couple of minutes of this round is, is giving it to him on my card unless Harrison comes up with something dramatic here in the closing seconds. Look, looks frustrated, Harrison. Still trying to solve the puzzle of the style that's in front of him. Mrs. Harper, do you want to come through? Oh. Mrs. Del Beato, let's have a look. I know, I know. My bank won't give me the number of my branch. Go straight for me. Result, a pain in the neck. Talk about tense, nervous headache. There's got to be another way. What my diagnosis, love? Try another bank. Welcome back to the Brayhead Arena. Some drama here, quite a plot developing. Body shots landed. Estrada 21, Harrison 6 so far. You cannot get close without taking shots. And I tell you, these body shots are going to take a lot of steam out of Harrison. Nobody likes body shots, I'm sure. Harrison doesn't like them. And these left hands are landing bang on the ribcage. 
you could say that maybe Harrison has got a share of one of these rounds so far, but my card has given all three to Estrada. Well, I've given Harrison a share of the second, the other two to Estrada. But the thing is, the lack of success Harrison is having, he just can't solve this fellow, he cannot get into range. Estrada seems to have the perfect antidote to everything that Scott tries. So when they picked this guy from the four they were looking at, did they make a mistake? Well, it's early days, that, that's why they have title fights over 12 rounds, and Harrison is an excellent 12-round fighter, but I'm worried, as I said earlier, he's forcing his work, so he's going to use up a lot more steam than when, when your work is flowing. Still missing, still missing. He's outreached as well, that's a big, big factor in this fight too. Plus the South Force style, plus that fast, scything left hand, there it is again. And Harrison, not much head movement, pretty easy to hit with that, and just a good measure, Estrada pits in another down, says that's better from Harrison. Another good left hand to take and return. So far, Harrison has looked frustrated and frankly ragged, but maybe he can turn it around. Well, I'm thinking Columbia must be a tough school because this guy's not even in the, the, the top three over there. And boy, you can certainly fight a bit of good right hand from Harrison. Maybe Harrison will start to get to him. There's another left sunk to the body from Estrada. Harrison has an answer this time. He gets a little closer. Good footwork, getting himself into range. Estrada just seemed to be blinking uncomfortably there on the inside, I noticed. You would think eventually Harrison's strength would start coming into play, maybe from the halfway stage. But he already his face is fairly banged up from the punches he's taken. This is better. Harrison got in with the right hand. Estrada had success before it. Just momentarily no, no, now Harrison's starting to get him. Is he weakening this Columbia? It's not a knockdown, but he has a more thoughtful look about him. Is he just starting to unravel here, Estrada? I fancy Harrison has just started to get to him in this round. He suddenly looks weaker and a lot less confident. Yeah, but he's still come back with a good left hand as Harrison moved him, but that was the little shining light that Harrison needed. Just give him one chance and he'll grab it with both hands. Distress signals coming from Estrada. Yep, there's a ragged look about him for the first time. And he goes down this time. Very quickly up. Breakthrough for Harrison. He's had three and a half difficult rounds with this guy, but I think he's beginning to feel the strength now. And Estrada is giving out a lot of distress signals as he goes back to his corner. He's blinking away, looking at the canvas. Ian, if this was an old B movie, I would start to wonder what the plot was here. There were no signs whatsoever that he should want out of this fight. He was doing well. He got pushed to the floor, he didn't get punched to the floor. Good body shot there, which may have sickened him a little bit. But I've never seen a man's attitude change so drastically in a fight. Unless he was caught by a shot on the inside that took more effect than we thought at the time. But doing so well, I mean, it's only one punch. That was the good body shot. That was a bit of a sickener. But for heaven's sake, he's taken the count, he's expecting it back up. It's the way he was walking back to the corner, shaking his head as though he wants out of there. So this would be the perfect time for Scott Harrison to put his foot to the floor. Now he might really jump on Estrada. He might struggle now to keep the fight at range, where he looked pretty effective in the first three rounds. Was the minute long enough? Something seemed to go out of the Colombian halfway through that last round. And he's now reeling back on the back foot and shipping punches. Find some fire. But this looks different now. A lot different. And down goes Estrada again. The end could be near here. Gets up at nine. Doesn't look much like he really wants to go on, does he? Why is he staggering? He hasn't taken a solid headshot. That, he wants out of there, but he's having a go now at least. Tremendous toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, and Estrada came off worse. 
Harrison was accurate there, thumping home the hooks, siding punches, down Estrada goes again, and it's called off in the fifth round. Scott Harrison retains his WBO featherweight championship. Blasting away Walter Estrada in the fifth. Well, it took him time to get going, but the end came relatively suddenly. Yeah, well, I mean, it's possible that body shot maybe took all the stuffing out of Estrada. It was a lovely shot, but I've never seen a fighter who's doing so well in a match crumble so suddenly from one, particularly a body shot, not even a head shot. He just seemed to lose all desire, wanted out of there. Scott still has his title intact, but I think a lot of questions will have to be asked. That was not a good uh, Scott Harrison performance. He could not solve this guy out whatsoever. It wasn't a, really a conclusive finish. The guy seemed to collapse out of the fight. So, Scott, we're seeing you're amongst the, the top four or five featherweights in the world, but that performance but will not underline it any in my book. Scott, not one of your better performances, but thankfully you're still champion. Even bearing in mind he was having to fight a guy who's coming in at late notice about whom he knew very little. I don't expect Estrada that was any more awkward than Abelian would have been. So Scott seemed short of ideas, couldn't solve the fellow out, but this fellow just, he couldn't go with Scott. Scott is tremendously strong, you would expect this to happen in the second half of the fight. The sudden crumble probably took away the chance Scott had to, to put his mark on this fight. He struggled all the way through. The, the finish, I suppose, was conclusive enough, but uh, I think Scott would much rather have done it in a cleaner manner. The desire and self-belief suddenly went out of Walter Estrada in the fourth round, and the end came in the fifth. And Harrison now will look ahead. He do, does still have to defend against Abelian, who's his mandatory challenger. He's a Gary Shaw fighter. And uh, I think that fight will come up another southpaw, but a better southpaw than Estrada, who is, is his last desperate throw and was getting caught a lot. You knew the end was coming, didn't you, in the fifth? Yeah, you could see the look on his face. You, you could see he, he had enough, he wanted out of there. No nightmare tonight. This time he holds on to the crown and can look ahead to bigger things. He says he wants to unify the title against the big boys of the division, led by Manny Pacquiao now, who is due to fight Juan Manuel Marquez in May, though that's by no means a certainty. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and three seconds of round number five, referee Gino Rodriguez has called a halt to the contest. In his opinion, Estrada was in no position to continue. Your winner, and he is still the two-time WBO featherweight champion of the world from Cambersland in Scotland, Scott, the real McCoy, Harrison. Well, Barry, they eventually got the result they wanted, but why did he struggle so much during the first three rounds? Well, he was one very good at all. He was very, very flat-footed, which I know Scott usually is like, quite flat-footed, but especially so in that, that fight. Um, I know the guy was very awkward. Admittedly, you know those, those looping uppercuts would 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 give anyone nightmares, and the southpaw style as well. But he did train for that, and maybe psychologically he thought he was going to get a, a you know a late replacement, and just thought he wouldn't have been of the same caliber of his original opponent. And Spencer, they say the good champions have the ability to change tactics, and he did in round four. That's right. He just turned it all around. His opponent just seemed to crumble. Really, he, he seemed... was it a case of him crumbling or, or Harrison tapping the pace? 